There are many ways to set up a neurofeedback office. You want to be most aware of the relationship of how the trainer sits just opposed with the patient. Here we're showing you how to enter a new patient into a neurofeedback software program. This particular program is eager, but the same would happen regardless of the program you're using. Kristen is entering the client's identification number, and then she'll enter their full name, followed by their birthday, and other information that is required by our office. Part of your setup will be to determine what you want required by your office. Now that she has the client entered into the system, she's going to select the client and she will enter the protocol that she wants to set up for training. This particular system lets you select from the screen the protocol location and then you can enter the filters. This would be true of other software training programs no matter who the developer is. Now that the protocol has been entered, Kristen retrieves the patient that has been saved in the program. There you go. And you can see that she already has her sensors set up ahead of time, ready for training. She knew that there would be a referential training montage, so there are two clips and one flat sensor. It's important when you're doing neurofeedback that you develop a routine. It will be hard to have a routine initially, but as time goes on, you'll develop a very nice flow. You can see that Kristen struggles a little bit with twisted center sensors. Seems like sensors always get tangled. She's preparing a protocol which is going to be placed at C4, which has a flat and two ear clip sensors. So her method is to prepare the 1020 paste and she will apply that to all three of the sensors. She applies it to the flat sensor first. There is a separate video in the course library that shows you how to apply the sensors. Now that she's pulling out the other two ear clips, you can see how they get tangled again. And then she'll apply the tent 20 paste onto one set of ear clips followed by the other. She's using a Q-tip and she's applying enough to cover the sensor on each side, placing a little bit on each side of the clip. Notice that she's not dipping the sensor into the container, but rather applying it with the Q-tip. Now she's taking the other sensor in a moment. I know her routine, so I know exactly what she's going to do here. She's got a little glass tray, kind of like a coaster, and she places the sensors on that so that she's not messing up her table, because if she does that, she'll have to clean up the table later. She continues to apply it to the second sensor, And then she puts a bit of new prep on the glass tray, which is what she's going to use to prepare the scalp before applying the sensors to the ears and scalp. Just a little dab and then she dips her Q-tip in there. She has a routine, starting with the ears. She cleans the front and the back of the ears with the Q-tip that had new prep on it. giving it a little scrubbing, rubbing it a couple times. And then she'll place the clip where she's prepped. You can see she presses softly on the front and back of the ear 
To create a good contact, the warmth of the finger sprints out the 1020 paste and makes a good contact. And here you can see Amy's a very cooperative patient. She tilts over a little bit to let Kristen clean the front and back of her other ear with new prep again. She probably using the same Q-tip. This is considered to be good aseptic practice as the Q-tip has only been used on Amy and laid on the glass plate. Some people prefer to use several Q-tips and that's also a fine practice. Amy again is very cooperative. She's sitting nice and still. A little bit unlike some of the seven-year-olds that we work with. And she helps by holding on to the Q-tip while Kristen measures using the 1020 system. Measuring from the nasium to the inion, finding CZ, and then she moves over to C4 where she takes the Q-tip. And again, it's got new prep on it. You will be devising ways to make this your own process and have it go smoothly. For instance, the chairs we have are very handy. They have a little place where you can stick the sensor in the back. And now she's got the sensor with the paste. And now you can see Kristen is moving the wires out of the way. Again, Amy is cooperative, but if she were a young child or someone with tactile sensitivities, she may be disturbed by having them in the way. So Kristen's routine is to move them out of the way, clip them onto her shoulder. And you see Kristen gives her a little pat, lets her know everything's okay. And she comes over and starts the program. The first thing she's going to do is check for impedance. And you know, we want the impedance below 5K ohms. Let's see how it goes. Lovely. So she can get out of the impedance check and start the program knowing she has a good reading. She waits for the data to calibrate before the program starts. You can see she's got filters set 4 to 7, 12 to 15, and 22 to 36. That's what she put in on the protocol screen. And now she's showing you how to change. She, uh, she's changing the zoom, so she's changing how the scale on the screen so she can look in a little bit closer and then the next thing she's going to do is change the thresholds showing you that the thresholds can be made wider or narrower. She'll set the thresholds according to the protocol established for this client and she'll look for artifact and work with the client to make sure that the artifact is minimized. There's a smaller threshold, very, very small. We would never make it that small, but for demonstration purposes, you can see. That's a look at the raw EEG and you see those bumps that happened, kind of like waves? That's Amy demonstrating for us eye blinks. And if you look to the right of the screen, you see muscle activity. If you look to the bottom, you see those pointy things. And they're also up at the top of the screen. And that's a little bit of cardiac artifact. So Kristen's just about ready for training. For the purposes of this video, we're showing you everything on one screen so we're not jumping around and making you dizzy. Up until now, you've been looking at the therapist screen and now we've switched over to the client screen, which is the client's view and there's the therapist view again. Typically, this would be on two separate monitors. There are different things that you can look at while you're training. So here we have the filtered EEG. Here we look at 
a continuous history of the power of each of the filters over the course of time. This is called a spectral display. It's looking at the power of each frequency in real time. And here we're looking at some raw data, which tells us about the power numerically as well as standard deviations. We want to show you that the software program lets you see that you can view different things while you're training. And here we are back at the therapist screen. This is another thing that's programmed that lets you see what happens in between each what's called a period in this software program. Kristen's going to show us a different screen. And as she starts, before she begins, she's checking her impedance again. It stayed very good, so she knows she can go back to the therapist screen and begin training. Here, we're looking at having the client view an image of a picture being completed. And along with each image or part of the image that fills in, there's a beep. So there's both visual and auditory feedback, which is very consistent with any of the software programs that are available to us. Take notice that this seating arrangement allows good verbal interaction and good emotional support while they're training. Kristen's sitting there like a coach, so she can interact with Amy. We zoom in here again and we can see the therapist screen. And you see those bigger vertical lines at the bottom of the screen? Again, that's a very rhythmic type of artifact, and it's a heartbeat. So the EEG is picking up pulse. Back to the client screen. Again, these would both be on separate screens when you're training. There's a good zoom in of that pulse artifact. And that'll be talked about more in the course. We just want to show it to you on the screen here. And now that we've finished training, we have a summary that's collected all the information that occurred while we were training. So we can see things like amplitude and standard deviations. This can be measured across time. And if you like, you can replay the data. Each of the different software programs allows you to replay and look over exactly what was recorded when the client trained. Kristen's going to select a fragment of that data. And this can be very good for the purposes of supervision if you want to show your mentor something that's been recorded and you want to discuss how you trained. And it's also good for the purposes of comparing data both early in the session with data in the end of the session, as well as showing the client some changes that may have occurred. Now that she's all done, Kristen is keeping her routine. She's applying some alcohol to a cotton pad, and she's taking a tissue that she's going to use for cleaning the sensors. You don't want any chemical on the sensors themselves unless they are required to be kept in a saline solution or water. These are silver chloride sensors, and they just get wiped off and cleaned, and then you see she rests them hopefully not to get tangled again. She cleans the sensor off before she puts it down to save herself from having to clean up the table later. Final sensor is being taken off and cleaned. She knows exactly where she's going to put it once it's cleaned. And now she takes that cotton pad that she put the alcohol on earlier, and she's going to clean up the ears first. 
and then she'll clean off C4 where she had applied the flat sensor. So the level of physical touch that occurs with neurofeedback will be new to most of you. I can tell you it usually is less of a concern to a patient than it is to a therapist learning neurofeedback who is not used to physical touch with a patient. We will talk about that specifically, and we talk about it in the course when there are unique circumstances, such as sensitivities associated with trauma, excuse me, sensitivities associated with autism or concerns related to working with people with trauma. Kristen cleans up the workplace, so we're keeping consistent with our COVID procedures. Wiping down the surfaces first, then the table, the glass plate. Amy's finished, so she's ready to leave. Kristen just makes sure everything's okay. Session is over. Kristen continues to clean where there would have been contact, preparing it for the next patient. What I particularly like here is Kristen has a very nice routine that's well honed, so it doesn't leave anything to the imagination. It makes it much easier to be sure that she's completed everything just as it should be done. Thank you, Kristen and Amy.